So today we're discussing the secrets of profitable landlords. Have you ever wondered what sets successful landlords apart? Well, today we're going to talk about the eight things that successful landlords do differently. Let's get into it. So I'm Jess. I'm Adam. We're for the landlords.com. We're a letting agency with the UK's number one property sourcer. We're also here with Craig today, lettings director of forlandlords.com. Say hello, Craig. Hi. Hello. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, what do successful landlords do differently as a business? Well, there's lots of things. Um, but to make it easy to understand, easily digestible, we break it down into eight, eight things. Eight, eight things, things, yeah. There's a discussion around each of the eight things. Um, so dive straight in. Number one of the eight things. Void the void, basically. Mm. One month void plus moving costs could be 25% of your annual profit. Mm. So, Craig, what's your experience? Of that? Craig, reason Craig's here, of course, is this is what Craig does day to day. I just get the benefit of it. Adam does a lot of talking about it. Craig actually does it. <laughs> you know? So, um, used to seeing us on videos. Um, Craig, in your role as you know, running all lettings, all management for the business, Avoiding the void, mm. how do we go about doing it? What do, what do we do to make sure that void period is as short as possible? A, a big thing with voids is, um, well, well, recently with the market, a, a lot of landlords think that there's not as many properties available and there's more tenants. Yeah. So literally properties should fly out the door, which usually is the case. A big thing right now is, particularly with um, voids, mm. is curb appeal. Yeah. You've got to get your property to the front of the queue for everybody. Yeah. So, as you know, tenants will look at more than one property and they will always look at the best ones. Yeah. So it's totally true that market rents have gone up. Um, there is demand out there. You know, people, mm. but I say that there's less tenant demand right now. Right now, so there was a peak. Tenant I demand was going up I kind of feel slightly. like we've come out of that. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. Post Christmas, I, I, yeah, first yeah. few months. Yeah, I'm not sure if rent's going up quite as much as it was. We mm. might be slackening off a bit. You will definitely, you'll, you'll always rent a house out. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a tenant for every house, but if you want the best rent, the top rent, yeah. then we're And the best tenant. They're the going to be a bit picky, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna, you're going to talk about curb appeal will make it go fast. Because even if there's, um, yeah, let's say there's 100 properties on the market, but only 40 people want to move. If you're in the top 40% of the houses that are available on the market, curb appeal, the quality of them, yours will fly out the door and you'll think the yeah. market's amazing. If your mm. house is a bit tatty, you're going to struggle a bit yeah. and you're going to have a different experience. So avoid mm -hmm. the void. I take that point. Absolutely. Make sure it's bang. It's up there. What about the, the mechanics of it? So um, old tenant moving out, new tenant moving in. That's, how, how do we keep that as short as possible? It's, it's basically, um, once you know your tenant's going to move out, it's, it's activating the marketing immediately. Mm. And the aim is to get in there, do viewings while the tenant lives there. Oh, because right. a furnished mm. house always looks better than an unfurnished yeah. house. So that's the aim. Um, but it's also doing things like uh, a pre-checkout. So going in there a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. um, establishing if anything needs doing, and ultimately they're engaging <clears> with the tenant at that point, because that reduces the void, because yeah. if you can get things done faster, again, a, a smoother and quicker turnaround, that yeah. gives you. I know something you've been doing, we can't do it on every property because we haven't got it, but we'd always aim to do it on the, on the turn, is get a video of the house when it was empty. So yeah. during the turn, there's a point when it's looking yeah. its best, it's all empty, you get a video of it, you can't always get into a property to do a viewing mm. in between. Sometimes the tenants at work, they won't let you in, they don't Sometimes, have to let yeah. you in. It's, you know, it's rare, most tenants will cooperate and let you in and you want to keep it, you want to get rented where they're still living there. Um, but if you get a video, you can send a video out, maybe take a pre-application before they've even moved out if they won't let you in. That's a, that's mm. a good, good look, maybe a little side tip there. What about planning the work? So if there's some work, mm. get it, get it organised early? Definitely. Get quotes. You, you can get quotes at any point, <clears throat> so you don't have to wait till the tenant moves out to get a contractor in there. Again, most tenants will be accommodating. Um, and again, if, if it is something that tenants have accidentally done, you can still negotiate and agree yeah. the, the, the cost from the deposit whilst they're still, whilst there, still there. Which is a lot easier. It is a lot easier. That, is, that makes it a lot easier whilst they're still there. You've still mm. got, got hold of them in some way. Yeah, um, yeah mm. it's, it's, it's a nicer conversation as well, rather mm. than when they've disappeared. 
either you can't get hold of them, then you've got to get the same deck on the deposit. It's going off on a tangent yeah. there, but that makes it more hard. Um, or it's a bit of a you know an, well, e an email ba battle. Exactly, it's more high risk. Once yeah. they've moved out, they've moved out. Yeah, basically. You know. And I was to say, don't cut corners and try and do it yourself. No. Get a professional decorator in, the right people, so that the new tenant isn't picking fault yeah, exactly. and calling you back saying, oh, mm -hmm. hold on. Yeah. So if I was to, I don't know if this comes. So we've got we've got eight points. This is on point one. It kind of you know avoiding the void, but. That, you know, later on down it might slip in there but having somebody else do the work for you <coughs> the pros they're insured mm. they do a good quality job they're fast on a void and I've seen this often a self-managing landlord or even a managing agent one with us as a managing agent but they think they're going to save some money they'll go and do some decorating organise the carpets and do whatever whatever and you call them up three weeks later and they've still not done it mm. you would have, have done it in two, two or three days exactly. done um, you know, I'm a dentist and I'm painting the blooming walls. So and, avoid and then, the void yeah. then doesn't mean yeah. actually make sure there's never a void. It means just make sure it's as fast as possible. Yeah. When, because because always, yeah. tenants are always going to move out. Small, 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 small. Yeah, try, and, try and not have a void. Keep a tenant in there yeah. long term yeah. um, if you can. If you can't, and there's a bit, they've got to move out, keep okay. it as tight as possible. So, yeah. Cool. That's number, number one. one. Number That's two then. Number two. Yeah. What's number two? Number two we've got is <clears throat> control bad debt. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. That's it's a big one. It is a big one. Well... I never used to understand how big a deal this is. So I'm not the world's best landlord. I'm definitely not the world's best letting agent. I mean, you're getting close. <laughs> um, but there was a point when I first met Craig that I had a letting agent. Uh, uh, we had a letting agent. I was supposed to be our letting agent. There was mm. a name over the, the door. Mm. Our first ever employee page was sat at the desk. Yeah. Still with us. Um, mm. And Craig, you walked in as the second person there and went, oh my God, what's all this? So as a landlord, I'd assumed this whole list of eight things, they're all wrong, but this was probably the biggest one where it was like, oh my God, arrears don't have to be 10%. If you put this process in place, tenants pay. Now, I'm not <coughs> suggesting that everybody watching this video, um, uh, listening to the podcast is as bad as I was, but I know they're at least halfway. So what, what's this key to having, well, the headline, is, what's your arrears, arrears rate? Max two percent. Yeah, max. Is what, max. What, yeah, max. That's the, and that's bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. Yeah. That's that's day. That's, it normally that's floats Christmas. around yeah. one just under one percent. Yeah, one yeah. and a bit percent. Usually, yeah. usually you can round it down to one percent comfortably. And go, that's all yeah. right. Sometimes it would blow one percent. Sometimes you look at it and it's two percent. And which you, I know, speaking to yeah. Yeah. someone who works for us yesterday, who's worked for a major corporate, said they were used to float around eighteen percent. Yes. Now, which is yeah. insane. It's insane. Mm. It's insane. It they're, really a, insane. they're a household name. Yeah. Mm. Um, the if you go on the Arla website, the Arla website will quote between five and seven percent. Yeah. Which okay. between, I mean seven percent. <clears throat> if you say between five and seven, mm. well, seven percent. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Arla agents are generally meant to be better than. So yeah, if but, ours is one, why? Uh, what's different? Yeah, what do we what do? What is different? What do you do? Mm. Well, is is basically is consistency. That's probably the biggest mm. thing. So we have a very strict process. The staff never ever kind of steer away away from it it's exactly yeah. the same every, every time, time. And, and and when you're in the office and you know you in, or you ever come in visitors you may hear us say 7 14 28 mm -hmm. we say it all the time yeah. but it actually means something and it's basically a strict process in terms of um, timeline um, and it's when we start activating our written processes with tenants and basically what it means is you start something at seven, but you end at 28. Days, on what, between days. 28 days. So it's seven points of contact in the first seven days after a tenant hasn't paid their rent, isn't it? Exactly. And, and it, usually by point seven, they've paid, right? Usually. Mm -hmm. If they haven't, you then go to day 14, which is then something else called a notice of intention. But the aim is basically by 28 days, there's a section 21 in place. Yeah. If everything's been exhausted and we still haven't managed You're to recover. You're talking technical speak. Section 21 is the thing that is the notice to get the tenant out. So... Yes. I've noticed as well when watching this process happen, mm. it's not just the fact that it happens, it happens all the time. Mm. And I know in other agencies, it either doesn't happen like that or it doesn't happen as quickly and as urgently. If you haven't mm. called the tenant within three days because they missed the rent, what are you saying? Yeah, it doesn't mm. really matter. It doesn't really matter. Well, I think that's, that's why most of the time... If you'd call the same day. You get by, You don't even get to point day seven because no. they've usually paid because yeah, exactly. you've been so strict right from day mm. one. If they miss the, the, um, the rent payment yesterday, they're getting a call today from you. Exactly. And it's the wait. Craig, it's not always you, I know. Mm. It, it, there's a team. But it did used to be. I think you set the tone. Yeah. It used to be you. Yeah. Uh, it's not, oh, you've 
And, and I, I know what Anna used to do, because as a landlord, I'd have, I'd have, oh, you, would I have called them? Probably not. I'd probably send them an email or a text. Um, I might have called them you know, sometime in the next month, mm. and I'm asking, so I'm already behind the curve. And I'd have said, why didn't you pay? Or yeah. You say, pay. You know, saying I don't, I'm not looking for an, I, I, I'm not looking for an excuse or the mm. reason or I mean I might need to dig into it if you lost your job or whatever. But nine times a ten, they haven't. There's well, no. I've just forgotten. I didn't mm. send the standard order or um, <clears throat> I prioritise something else in my life above the roof of my head. Yeah. Well, what's your long card number? Can you please pay? Exactly. And you ask for it. But we make the tenants feel as well that they can talk to us. So it, it oh, yeah, you I'm know, a... it's not. It's not cutthroat, you know, where we're on the phone. I, I've, just, I've just made Craig out uh, to be a real ogre. Yeah. You're doing it in a really, <laughs> really nice way. And, 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 and just to stress, when the, the Section 21s, the possession notice, this is very rare. You know, we usually work with the tenants and, and it works by communicating with the tenant, mm. listening to them, and sometimes even agreeing a repayment package. It, yeah. it works. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and actually going really to crony doesn't work because I know that there are other agents out there. We've bought a couple. We've bought some agencies and they had a different process and it was... It was um, um, section 21 and take them to court straight away on day one. Day, that doesn't work because yeah. you've lost them straight away, it, haven't it's you? It's crazy. You've if, lost them. If mm. you go in too heavy handed with the rears, you have to just have a really kind of careful approach because if you go in too heavy, that's it. The tenants will just slam the door and that's how it will stay. Yeah. Um, and, and we've got a really good way of making sure that door stays open. Um, and, and the staff have really good working relationships with these people as well. You know, they get to know each other and, and, and that's, that helps as well. Yep. Okay. So one other thing on rental arrears mm. is you can insure against it mm. that's a good point yeah 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 no landlord should <coughs> ever let a tenant move into a property without yeah. rent protection yeah ever yeah for, I th uh, yeah for what it costs you know we're talking well, one under 30 pounds yeah. a month yeah you know you, well uh, actually uh, dog insurance is more you, pet insurance is more. You couldn't insure mm. a pet. No. I think actually some just little dogs are not quite as much cover. It might be 10 or 15 quid. But 30 yeah, quid yeah. for a £100,000, £150,000 house where, go on, getting a tenant out is going to be... Well, that's just it. Five it, grand? It will cover you. And plus loss of rent? Or including loss of rent? So it's loss <coughs> of rent and eviction. So it's up to £100,000 worth yeah. of mm. legal fees, loss of rent. Or, I'm right, I know, £100,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, there's the tears as well. It, it, it's, it's an amazing product. Yeah. Uh, and we've negotiated a really good one yep. um, that even pays you when your property's empty um, for a certain period. Yeah, afterwards, um, during the term, because you're remarketing it, yeah. The, the pros of it are huge for what it costs. So my number one advice to landlords is just never, ever mm. say no. Yep. Um, not all policies are the same. We get that from it as well. So, mm. uh, oh, I found it cheaper online, you know. Well, there's so many policies, yeah. like, because it's rent protection. And literally, sometimes that's all it is. Yeah. It will just pay you pay for you your the loss rent. of rent. Yeah. It won't pay for your eviction. It won't pay for your court. It won't pay for sure. your bailiffs. So you've got to be really careful. Which is four, four to five times the cost of yeah. the, of the uh, rent. Now... Some of those big names, and they are big names, the policies that don't quite seem that it doesn't quite cover the way, they're mm -hmm. big names. You yeah, find them, yeah. but the policies that a landlord should be looking at, you you probably unless you, you probably never heard of them because they're the mm. people who do the referencing. That's where. So if you've done the referencing, mm. right, that is checking your tenant. Yeah. The that referencing company will ensure, and that's a good test. Well, if they're going to well, ensure, well, they're in that specialists, and yeah. they and yeah. they create these yeah. policies specifically. For that reason, yep. yeah. If you just go to the average, it's not going to cover you for everything you need. Cool. Brill. Okay. Number three. Keep us moving. Ensure that maintenance is value for money. Mm. So basically, you know the cost of stuff. Mm. Know what mm. you should be paying. Yeah. As a landlord, this is this is where things can get out of control. Things don't get out of control <clears throat> for me, but they can. Um, the right job, identifying the right job, getting it done. For the right price and to the right quality. And getting it done straight away, get it then put yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah. Time is it's time. a big thing. Yeah. So we don't say cheap. So value for money is important, that's the word, yeah? Because some landlords, you'd like landlords to have a budget per year and know. Some landlords think the houses never need maintenance. Yeah. I think it's really important before you even you know rent a property to anybody is, is have a budget for the year. Yeah. Already in your mind. Mm. I mean, it won't always be that exact budget. No. you know consistently but you need to have it somewhere in your mind that yeah. maintenance will, will it, come it, it will come up and it, and it needs happen. attending to if you don't attend to it it's got consequences you know dilapidations things get worse tenants get fed up they don't pay their rent maybe yeah. uh, they don't look after the house maybe they call the council and get you a fine maybe all those things so keep on top of it also if um, you're a self-managing landlord mm. you need to have 
what we've got and what other good lighting agents have got. You need a good roofing contractor, electrician, mm. gas engineer, decorators, people who can do roof work, mm. you mm. name it. Yep. If you haven't got that list of people yourself, <clears throat> then good, you're going to overpay, call. you're going to be scrabbling around Correct. for weeks yeah. to get someone out just to give you a price. One yeah. of our, our KPIs in the business is how many contracts have we got in each of those categories versus the properties we've got under management. Because we know if you go low, if you only got one handyman in that area that'll do that, well, guess what? Your prices yeah. are going to go yeah. up. Um, well, we can have a roof leak today and a guy on site this afternoon or tomorrow yeah. pricing up. Yeah. Exactly. And, and don't forget, a really important thing <coughs> with contractors is, it's the betting. Yeah. So it's not just having a pool of contractors, it's going through the channels yeah. you need to go through. You can't just ring somebody uh, yeah. you know, offline, you can't just Google somebody and call them. The, the process is well, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Um, this the, the, this will leak into the next point, but we don't want to blur the lines. But, but it, it, Craig, you're absolutely right. Now, this is the story, and we'll cut it short so that we don't take up. This could be yeah. a whole podcast all by itself. But the landlord who sent his own um, contractor out to do the handiwork, fell through the roof, died, and it's the landlord's fault. And this is a landlord. Mm. I mean, there's so many things landlords don't know and see what they're, they're, they're liable mm. for. But in yeah. that case, the landlord should not have contracted the handyman to fix a roof because he wasn't a, you check his insurance, he's not insured to work at height, mm. be a roofer, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> that landlord, was done, and it's happened more than once, I say that, it's the case law, it's happened since, under the same case law, was sued for man's, uh, corporate manslaughter. He's a, he's, he's a landlord. Yeah, yeah. Um, which well, is it, bad enough. Obviously, somebody died, bad, but he well, lost some houses. Yeah, lost some houses. Because you think if a contractor accepts a job, the onus is on the contractor, mm. but it's not. It's on the landlord. And sometimes the agent, if you haven't done everything you need to do to vet that that contractor is capable, of doing and that's a really you know yeah. serious word, they have to be capable to do it, but you have to check they're capable. Yeah. Uh, in that case, the civil care claim followed the criminal care claim. So corporate manslaughter, prison, bad. Yep. Uh, and then and now you owe us the amount mm. of money for a person's life, mm. sell your houses and give mm. it to the widow, which, yeah, terrible. There's, there's bigger things that went wrong there, somebody died. Mm. Um, but yeah, stuff you've got to be aware of. So mm -hmm. that leads us on that, to that leads on to the next, next point really yeah. nicely, which Number is- four is be compliant. Be compliant. So let's just mm. remind ourselves, this seems, we're talking about things that <clears throat> successful landlords do to be more profitable. We're talking about being compliant. Now, that's compliance not... feels like a new issue for a lot of landlords, well, but the good guys <laughs> have been doing it for years. Yeah. yeah, the good yeah. guys have just always been doing it. It's also, it's not mm. ever going to make you any money being compliant, mm. but this is the thing that can... I don't know, I think it will. It's a, oh, oh, it can get you higher rents, it can yeah. get... All, you're right, it can. Get your higher end value if you property and all that. Yeah. But the biggest thing that it's going to affect, you know, the, the, the profitability at the end of the year is, we call it the hand grenade, the, in it goes, boom, something exploded and that cost you a load of money mm. because you didn't have a gas certificate, you didn't have that, you didn't have that, there's a fine, there's a rent repayment order. Mm -hmm. So come on, give, give us, scare us. What's, what's some of the things that can happen, Craig, that um, don't happen to us, to me, um, but you always hear about them. I've got two letters upstairs on my desk from an EHO, which yeah. I just forward on to the team and they'll deal with it. But I know it's not everybody's as lucky as no, I am. No, it, it's huge. I mean, there's literally fines for, when you say the word compliance, there's fines for everything. Mm -hmm. So everything you talk about under compliance, there is a fine if you do not have it. Mm -hmm. That could be anything from a gas to an EICR, even right to rent, which a lot of landlords still don't know about now. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had conversations before and I get asked, well, what, what does that mean? Um, you know, it's, it's literally making sure your tenant has the right to live and stay in the UK. <clears throat> and there's a process you have to follow to do that. And if you don't do that, mm -hmm. you get fined up to £10,000 per person, mm -hmm. per tenant. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. So if you think you're renting to one tenant and mm -hmm. there's 10 yeah. people living in your property on the way to you, that's 10,000 per... Yeah. And you've got to be an immigration officer. There's yeah, a, so basically, yeah. and, and as a landlord, you go, oh, that's unfair. That's red tape I can do without. Get an agent because yeah. you can't get away with it. And mm. Ten thousand. That ten thousand mm. pounds has just gone up. So I think it went from three, didn't it? Was it three or it's five? It's recently gone up. To it's 10, recently 000, gone up. Yeah. And when something goes up, and this is the border control that we're doing it. So mm. this will be men with guns coming, turning up, not not a man with a clipboard from the council. This is mm. you know, somebody put you in handcuffs, probably. I'm not quite sure if they can't do that. I'm making a bit up. It's probably, <laughs> probably a bit strong. I don't know. If you, if you, um, Possibly, but, it, but it's also... Um, it's more serious than the guy from the council. But the council will effectively ban you as a landlord. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah. As well. Yeah. So look, that, that, that's serious. Okay. So um, I've got two other things. All of these things block eviction. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Less scary than being arrested and stuff, but mm. um, will lose you a lot of money. Mm. If you've not registered your deposit, yep. Yep. your tenant can claim <clears throat> Three times. Three, three times, times the, the amount, amount of the deposit, deposit plus back, the deposit plus the deposit back as a compensation if you're not doing it. And it's not it. just not registered, not registered within 30 days? Yeah, 30 days. Yeah, of them moving in. Yeah. You um, still block eviction on that as well. Yeah, 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 you won't be able to kick them out, yeah. Mm. Uh, and the other one is not having a landlord license. Most, mm. not most, but a lot of councils have a selective licensing mm. policy. Yeah. Mm. If you don't have a license for your house, then your tenant can um, put in a rental rebate rent, claim, right? Rent, and yeah. claim back... I think all the rent for the time they've been living there, if the house was, yes. should have had a license in that time yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's thousands. All, the, all the rent. Mm. We've, we've, got, we've got one on the desk for a landlord that we don't manage, but we, we, yeah. we can see it. But the reason we don't manage it is it can't come to us until this mm. issue is mm. sorted. It's well, that's just what I'm about to say. It is happening. It's happening, yeah. It's, it's happening. happening. Yeah. You know, tenants are doing this. Yeah. A lot of these things, and that's why I said compliance feels like that, oh, it won't happen to me thing, but it's becoming more prevalent, more common, Council, it's also um, artificial intelligence and computers really help, you know, digitization of records. So if you are a council and you can see that somebody pays the council tax, the tenant, but the land registry is in a different person's name and you mm. can't check that manually, mm. but a computer can do the entire database in 10 minutes now. Well, if there's a mismatch, it's tenanted. Yeah. All I've then got to do is automatically generate a letter <clears throat> that goes out saying, oh, by the way, are you a tenant? Your landlord hasn't got a license. Um, here's, here's, yeah. here's the leaflet on how to claim back all your rent. Exactly, and, and that's that what they easy, do. And that's, that's why it's becoming yeah. easier yeah. For, for it to, yeah. um, to, to... And they can find you as well for not having it. Yeah, of course. So it's yeah, two yeah, lots. It's two, two lots yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can also go to prison for that kind of stuff as well. Nobody went into a landlord, uh, became a landlord to go to prison. No, no. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, number next, five, five, and this is a big one for self-managing landlords, if that's mm. you. Um, ensure that you're renting the house at the market level. Mm. And I've never met a self-managed landlord um, that has all their properties at market level. I even spoke to someone today who has two houses with agents that are well below market. Yeah, you, you, uh, Adam said it out loud, he's reading it, and he, went, he, he said the thing, and Craig said, how much? Like, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. I was looking at the, five the, years old. Yeah. looking yeah. at the spreadsheet that had been sent before the call, mm. wasn't I? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's 50%. It hadn't more been more put up in four right. years. Mm. So what's the process? What do, what do we do to keep it right, Craig? It's just consistently review the market. Um, constantly you know, be on the lookout. Mm. Um, just, just make sure you make note of the trends and, and stay with them. Mm. Um, you know, Because at the end of the day, this is a business. Um, and you need to make sure you're, you're running that business at the appropriate rate. Um, and annually, everything goes up. Yeah. So it, it's just one mm. of those things that That's you have to do. What it's Jess always process. says. So mm. if you're not charging the market rent, you might think you're doing your tenant a favour, but then when you have a maintenance issue and you've not been charging the market rent, mm. you're going to be scrubbing around and struggling to pay to fix the house so that yeah. your tenant actually loses out. So there's a direct correlation between customer satisfaction in our business, landlords mm. who are happy with us themselves, you know, correlation to um, how much profit they make. We, we, we make these videos, do these podcasts. Mm. The, fo the, the focus here is making you more money because we know that if you make less money, that's when you get complaints. Yep. Now, they're not totally. actual real complaints. They're just, mm. I mean, the boiler that breaks down that costs 1,500 quid, the landlord that's charging market rent always has, everything's compliant, they've got no other gripes goes, yeah, of course, that's what a boiler costs, and mm, I'd expect sure. it. I know that boiler's 17 years old, and I was expecting it to blow up or whatever. Or f in these cases, five years old. How long does a boiler last? But, <laughs> um, but the landlord who hasn't put the rent up, and it's still at £500, and the market rent's 750 probably has some other problems underneath the, underneath the carpet, and they're the one that says, how much? And doesn't fix the boiler, just goes and spends £200, and it breaks, and then... It's an ever-decreasing circle mm. of dissatisfaction where the landlord's just unhappy with being a landlord. You get the rent level right, you get all of these things right to make sure you're making the right amount of money, you're a happier landlord. Mm. You, you, you live a more relaxed life. Yeah. You're not constantly thinking, oh, God, well, everything spins. That, everything spins. Everything that's, spins. Your, that's your phrase, everything spins. Everything spins. Just works. So, um, okay. It's a business, run it like one. That's number five. Uh, number six mm. is um, regular mortgage review. Mm. So be looking ahead, know what you should be paying on your mortgage if you've gone on to a variable rate. Um, could you be getting a better deal on a fixed rate? And um, I don't know, I think part of this is have a really good buy-to-let specialist broker as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 
I mean, we're, we're outside the, the realms of what a normal letting agency would do. I mean, even talking about n numbers one to six here, that's even talking about it, a normal letting agency, well, they'll, they'll rent the house out, fix a leaky tap, mm. and, you know, that, that kind of stuff. We, we're talking about increasing profitability. When we start talking about looking at mortgages and introducing you, I mean, you've been introduced <clears throat> to a mortgage broker. We're not sure. mortgage brokers, we don't want to be. Um, but as a landlord, I always know that I need a good mortgage broker. So we we build relationships with what you call your power team, Adam. Yeah. So the people yeah, yeah. when when new business comes in, or when business gets reviewed every year, then you can introduce people to a power team. Mortgage broker is really key there. Um, it's tricky at the moment. I've I've been caught out personally in the last um, you know, year. Of course, interest rates went up from a three hundred and fifty year low to a you know seventeen eighteen year high. So it was pretty tricky. Um, I'm always looking ahead, trying to secure and um, get onto a, a product that's going to be good for the future, you know, for yeah. the next two well, years, was, five years, three years. But I'm, I'm a little bit between two stores. I was chatting to someone this morning about mortgages and they didn't realise that um, your broker can find you a deal. Um, it can be going through the refinance process with solicitors. And if during that time period, the lender who you're with has reduced their rates on their newer products, mm -hmm. A good broker will make sure that even Switch. though you're ready to sign yep. for this refinance, they'll speak to the lender and they'll get you on that cheaper product, mm -hmm. even though it's not the one that you got the initial decision in principle for. Uh, actually, right now, I've just this morning secured a tracker deal because... Oh, you said you were going to do that. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if rates go down now... So it's a tracker deal. I don't, I'm probably never going to take it. Hopefully, I'm, interest rates are going to come down. I'm going to get it fixed in because the, the the offer will last for six months. So hopefully, the interest rates will come down. But if I do need to take it, securing the tracker deal today, when mortgage rates come down, banks will put their margin up, mm. and I've secured a low margin, but it will go on to the new Bank of England base rate. Mm, so that's cool. When you talk about looking, oh, I didn't ever figure that. I say it's cool. I didn't know that. I couldn't work yeah. that one out. But exactly. Charlotte said, do that today. I've now, done one. Bang. Um, we could see where rates were going last year. So, and I had a, 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 a five-year fix coming to an end six months down the line. Mm. So I knew in six months I'm going to be paying loads more than if I took a mortgage out today. So Charlotte got me one where the offer lasted for six months. Mm. So I locked in a rate six months before my current one, and then it just went through then. Yeah. No early repayment charge and saved me hundreds of pounds a month if I'd have done the refinance later on. Yeah. So yeah, amazing. Cool. Get a really good mortgage broker, um, stay ahead. Uh, number seven, tax mm. or tax planning, basically have a, a prop specialist property accountant, right? Yeah, mm. and, and again, a landlord, you, you see landlords today who haven't thought about, I mean, it's been on the card, section 24 is what we're really talking about. I mean, there's other types of tax, I mean, get your, um, your personal tax down as low as you can by making claiming all the right things. Maybe, maybe go into a limited company. That's probably the way to get around the Section Twenty Four tax. And if you do, you've got to think about how you get the money about, out and all those ask things. Ask Craig how many letting agents do you know that talk about that sort of stuff? Zero. <coughs> yeah, literally zero. Literally yeah. zero. Yeah. 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 Um, however, in our office, and and there are. You know, not, not every in our team is an expert in tax. I'm not an expert in tax. We're, we're not, <laughs> None of us are, all right? <laughs> That's why we refer them to <laughs> somebody else. So we refer uh, them to an accountant. But we know what it means. Yeah, yeah, and there, yeah. there are people in our business who maybe, they, they do fix a leaky tap. And, you know, I'm not, mm. they're very good at fixing a leaky tap or reconciling accounts, but they're not going to know all about tax. And when you hear, let's go back to the boiler situation, maybe they have got their market rent, and everything's going right, and you do see this, you know, points one to one to six, they're absolutely bang on, it's all great, but now they're paying tax on turnover, which is what a landlord can do if they get it wrong. Maybe they're on an interest-only mortgage, the rate's up high, and, you know, the property manager on the end of the phone is wondering why he's not authorising this £400 maintenance bill, and the tenant's getting aggy and not mm. paying the rent. It's all getting worse and worse and worse, it's not spinning, it's nothing. Mm. Well, why? Because they haven't sorted their tax out and they're now paying, they, they see that £400 is £400 off an already um, loss making situation. Whereas with a flick of a switch, if you'd have done it two years ago, it would be a flick of a switch. Whereas now it's going to take another two years from now to fix it, but you know, still get on, on with it now. Um, you can move your properties into a limited company or buy properties in a limited company and get avoid having to pay uh, tax on a phantom profit. You can move existing properties to a limited company without paying stamp duty or capital gains tax, usually. Um, depends on how many you've got, actually. But speak to an accountant. You know, we're not going to yeah. give you advice on these things, but we can 
put you in touch with the right accountant. That's part of what Adam does in terms of, you know, these eight things. It's not just for a podcast, for a video. It's for um, every landlord who wants to ask and have, have these have these answers uh, answers to their questions. Cool. So, All right. Yeah. So the, the final thing. point, point eight, <clears throat> providing you've got one to seven in place, is what's next? Next. What are you going to do? So, so everything's house. right. Yeah. Find another house. If so, number number eight, the biggest the biggest way that a landlord, you got you got all number seven, you know, one to seven, right? Um, successful vandals buy more. If if you got one, two is better. If you got five, ten is better. <laughs> you know, yeah. there is there's always a point when you you have a conversation with a landlord and say, I've got enough. That's fine. And if they generally, you've got enough. Um, it's making a difference to your life. Maybe five, maybe ten, maybe five hundred, whatever. They've said enough. But I would be suspicious of any landlord who's got one or two properties and says they don't want to buy any more. Because if they say that, well, I'm not sure how that can be quite enough. Yeah. How many does our average landlord own? Nearly eight. Yeah, between eight and nine, I'd say, yeah, on average. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but if you've got one or two, of course it's better than none. And if you're on your journey, you're on your journey. Mm. Um, and maybe it is enough. Maybe it is enough. But if you've... If you've got one or two and you're not wanting to get to five, let's say, what's going wrong with all this moment my question? If you say, oh, nothing's going wrong, I'm just happy with that and I've got other things I'm going on and I'm, I'm investing in crypto and stock market, whatever, I don't know. But if that's enough, that's enough. But if it's just, yeah, I wanted to do this landlording thing, I thought it was going to work out, but it's caused me a load of hassle and it doesn't really make me any money, then one to seven are the things you need to sort out. So you sort of lift yourself up, look around and go, oh, do you know what, I'm ready for my next one now. Yeah. So, Cool. Mm. All right. Right. So, <clears throat> conclusion. There you have it. If you avoid the void, um, you um, avoid bad debts, control your maintenance. I'm trying to remember them all in order. Um, keep your market rent, um, at the, your yeah. rent, rent at market level. Uh, have your mortgages in uh, the, 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 the the right range. Make sure you do uh, keep keep on top of mortgages. You missed compliance, and the next one is tax. Thank Those you, there, thank, seven. You, thank you so much. Uh, compliance would have been in there. Tax. Yeah. Then you're ready to buy your, your yeah. next one. That's it. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot to think about, isn't mm. there? Um, keep keep it all going. Um, you boost your boost profitability. You'll be what we would call a su- successful landlord. Uh, that for me, defining it, you know, more success, more money, less hassle, and your time back. Yeah, mm. that's what being a landlord's about, isn't it? So. Indeed. Cool. All right. All right. Definitely. Cool. All right, thanks for watching. If you got any value out of this video, you're going to have to like, subscribe. subscribe. There'll be a link in the bio if you want to discuss optimising your portfolio, buying more houses, having Craig and his team make your current ones compliant. You can book a call with me and I can refer you to the the right member of the team, Mm -hmm. whether that's mortgages or um, our lettings negotiator who can give you a rental review and put you, help you put yep. your rents up. Depending on um, where you're listening to this or watching this, there'll be a link somewhere where you can click it. It'll either be a link or it'll be the blue talk to us button. The talk yeah. to us button gets some gets the right person to talk to you. They might come to your house, take pictures and put it on the market. Well, we, we, Craig could have something out there tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, or they might talk about switching agents or whatever other question you've got. So. Yeah. Cool. Thanks right. for listening. Cheers. Bye for now.